Hey guys, welcome back to Cask and Q or Whiskey and Barbecue Meat. Today I have Miss Cask and Q with me and we are going to review the Glen Rothis Bourbon Cask Reserve. So stick around. <music> Hey, thanks for sticking around. So on uh, the last video that Miss Cass and Q was on, we did a comparison between scotch and bourbon to see which one uh, that she liked best. This is the Glen Rothes Bourbon Cask Reserve. So this scotch is actually finished in bourbon barrels, first and second fill. There's nothing that shows on the contract on the label if it was a first fill or second fill barrel. So we're gonna give this one a try and see what Miss Cass and Q thinks. So the Glen uh, Bourbon Cask Reserve is a Speyside whiskey. It's lighter in color and, and it's gonna have some of the bourbon notes that you would expect from a typical bourbon, along with the malt flavor from a scotch. The Glen Rothes has a troubled history. It one, at one time burned down, it's changed hands so many times, different owners, different bottling companies has been associated with, the list goes on and on and on. And I can put that, uh, that history in the description box below. So the maturation of this whiskey is from uh, American oak cask as well as uh, Spanish oak casks. All right, so in our last video with Miss Cask and Q, which I'll put a card above her head, uh, tell us a little bit about your experience with, uh, you know, we drank scotch and we also drank some bourbon. Yes, I was expecting to like the scotch better. Why is that? Because of the color. It was lighter <laughs> yeah. in color, but I preferred the bourbon to the scotch. So. Is, more, is there a certain reason that, uh, I think you explained the video, but just as a refresher. I think too, like the bourbon is more familiar to me. I've had it yeah. in, you know, the old fashioned, I've, I've had it in some mixed drinks, mm -hmm. but just looking at them, to me, the scotch looked less intimidating, I, I just mm -hmm. because of the color. Sure. Um, but then I was surprised that the bourbon actually I prefer the you bourbon. You prefer the bourbon, that was surprising, yeah. Um, that's not uncommon. A lot of folks think, you know, uh, the scotch, you know, since it looks, it, a lot of times it doesn't have that deep color because it's not always a first fill cask, meaning that like, you know, with bourbon, it has to be a first fill cask, right? So that cask is new and the liquid, it, it, it absorbs all of that flavor from the cask, the wood flavors. And so, the, uh, in addition, that means color, more more of a bold color than what oh, a scotch okay. does. And a lot of times scotch is second fill or uh, ex-bourbon casks that a scotch distillery will buy from, okay. from bourbon distillers. And I guess I'm going by just like what I know about beer. Like when you're looking at beer, mm -hmm. a lighter beer is, um, I guess as far as girls go, like it's lighter, it's more refreshing, and the darker the beer gets, it's heavier. Yeah, it's a little bit opposite. <laughs> right, that's that what I'm sense. saying. I think yeah. that's why when I saw the scotch, I was just visually drawn to the scotch because of the color. Because I'm thinking like when I choose a beer, I usually choose a lighter beer. Yep. That's just, yeah. It's kind of the nature of the beast, so to speak. Right. And, and that just goes to show you how inexperienced I am with Scotch and bourbon that I, you know, didn't yep. really have that background when we went into that video. So the reason I uh, picked the Glen Rothis Bourbon Cask Reserve is because it marries both of those flavors together. So you have, okay. you have a lot of the bourbon flavors and you have some of the Scotch flavors kind of all intertwined. Now, I do have a question because I did try to do a little homework today. I'm good. So, because um, this says Scotch whiskey, I know the expression is a whiskey. You're close. Yes. Is a bourbon? All but bourbon I'm... and all Scotch is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon and Scotch. Oh, okay, so that's kind of like so a whole can have... rectangle square thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but this kind of confused me when I said when I saw that it said Scotch whiskey. Yeah. So, like, what exactly? And a lot of times you'll see. Um, so, on this particular box, like in Scotland, they'll say whiskey. It'll be spelled W H I S K Y, and sometimes you'll see it W H I S K E Y. -Y. Yeah, okay. yeah, and that's a, just a, a regional thing. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, to answer your question, so there's all kinds of different whiskeys. There's, right. you know, the, the two main whiskeys that you hear about is bourbon and scotch. 
so there's Canadian okay. whiskey, there's uh, whiskey from other uh, from other states, and, and it's a common misconception. A lot of people think that bourbon is only from Kentucky, um, and I thought that for a long time too, years and years ago. And uh, I learned when I went to one of the distilleries in Kentucky that that's not the case. So with bourbon, as long as the mash bill contains 51% corn, that's really all it needs. Okay. Because it has a legal definition gotcha. that it has to go by to be called bourbon. Otherwise, it's just a whiskey. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox this and pour a glass and we'll be right back. All right, now that we have a glass of this poured, uh, we're gonna just kind of explore it a little bit. Uh, that means we're gonna nose it, you know, when we smell it, that's just a fancy word for smelling it. Yes. See if the whiskey smells good. Take it to the nose. That's right. Yeah. Um, we'll kind of look at the color and see what kind of legs it has, meaning like the viscosity of the whiskey, and, uh, and we'll give it a rating. And we go by availability, taste, and value. Um, I know you don't know what this costs, but I'll let you know it's 45 bucks. Bad. No, not bad, and it's readily available. You can go just about any liquor store. Pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad. Uh, like one shoe or a each pair. shoe each? Yeah, a pair. Okay, okay so on this whiskey, um, when you kind of swirl it around and, and look at it in the glass, it's like a real light gold. Yes. Like, wouldn't you agree? That, I, I mean, it's a pretty agree. color, too, I think. I like the color of a McUltra. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Um, it's got some legs to it. You see the little teardrop? deals running I down. I do. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. And that is a good thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Usually the longer that you that those teardrops take to go down the glass, you can tell that it's probably going to stay on your palate longer. Okay. You know, so gotcha. a lot of times when you see them go real fast, it's kind of watery. That's usually uh -huh. an indication that it may not stick around very long on the palate. Okay. And so. that, that's a, you want it to stick around. If it tastes good, yes. Okay. <laughs> to me, that would be a bad thing. I want it yeah. to go away. I know. <laughs> Um, so let's go to uh, the sniff it. Let's go to the nose and see okay. and see what you pick up. Okay, so not so much the burning that I experienced um, with the first go round. Yeah, didn't send um, to the nostrils too bad. No, not at all. Um, I do pick up some citrus, citrusy mm -hmm. type thing. Yep. Am I close? Well, I mean, it's all individual, but yeah, I it's mean, they, they suggest what you're supposed to smell, but I don't like to, I try not to read that stuff and just go in blind and see what I see okay, and, then, so and what, then compare. What are you, what do you pick up? So you just get mainly like citrus, anything else? Like if you had to look for another flavor, is there anything else that pops out? No, no? okay, that's fine. Uh, so right away you get the, there's a little bit of ethanol, but not bad. Like I think that's the first thing I noticed, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's just part of whiskey. Right. Some. The alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a little yeah. bit of it, but it's not bad. This is a 40 ABV, uh, so 80 proof for bourbon fans. Mm -mm. Uh, but the, the ethanol is very, very light. And overall, this is a crisp, light whiskey. You get a little bit of the barrel char, but not much. The citrus is there for sure. I okay. think that's probably the second thing I noticed. I was right about that. And some vanilla and a creaminess, like um, like a cream brulee type of smell almost. Hmm. Like the, you know, the crystallized, like yeah, when like they- Like the sugar? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sugar yep. There might be a little hint of like some, uh, like a earthy grass type smell there, like fresh cut grass. I get the earthiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm picking up something that's rich, but I can't pinpoint it. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I like it. I, the nose, I think, is like a- a delicate kind of balance definitely, between all those different um, things. Yes, definitely milder to compared to what I um, had last time. Yeah, which yeah. I don't remember the name of it. You had the open, yeah. You had open fourteen last time. I remember time. it being a lot more overpowering when I was 
yes. and smelling it. And for sure, uh, Oven 14, that, that's a different, that's a like different I kind was, of deal. That's a different. Yeah, like uh, I, yeah. Was, I was like, I'm not sure I want to. Different style of scotch than yes. this one. This one is a space side. So that's usually lighter, fruitier, okay. and, and uh, okay. I don't know, just more approachable for beginners, I think. Okay. Well, let's give it a drink and see what you think. Okay. Just a little tiny sip. Keep it on the top. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Vanilla? Mm-hmm. Like vanilla extract, almost kind of strong. Yes. Like oily and vanilla. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the citrus. Yeah, I get the citrus on the back end. It's mm -hmm. like that vanilla pops out at me immediately. Like I think it's almost that's like the first thing. That yeah. Hit me was the vanilla. It, it's it, like if you were to imagine taking like any kind of a spirit, like a like a white dog whiskey or just, you know, PGA or something that doesn't have any flavor, and then putting some vanilla ex extract mm -hmm. in it, it's almost kind of like that, yeah. except it doesn't hurt as bad as like what, you know, PGA would or something like that. Yeah. Um, so the citrus is there for you, anything else? Or is that really the two things that, that you That really the vanilla, and I didn't smell the vanilla, but I definitely but tasted it, tasted it. Mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't have the burn that, that Oban, mm -hmm. am I saying that correctly? Yep had the last time. Okay, that's fair So enough. to me, to drink it is more enjoyable. Right. The low ABV on this makes it easy to drink and I think it makes it, on the flip side, a little more difficult to pick up some of the flavors uh, because they're so well mingled, I guess, uh, you know, married together that it's, it's hard to pick up one thing right off the bat, but the one thing that does hit you in the face, I, I agree, is the vanilla. Definitely. Um, and then, like I said, I think the citrus is there on the back end, um, and I'm getting like a uh, like almost a, the earthy thing again. Except this is more like a hay than what you oh. know. I smell it, and it almost smells like fresh cut grass. But then you drink it, it's almost like you would imagine like you know hay tasting. I get that, but that, not a bad way. It's just not there. Not a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a delicate whiskey on the finish. Do you still taste it? Like, mm -hmm. it's still there? So, I took another drink, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's a medium finish. Um, and at $45 a bottle, I think that's, I think that's a pretty good bargain. So I, um, again, am not super experienced, so um, you can take my um, words for whatever. Um, but I did do a little bit of reading um, when you asked me to do this video because because of my inexperience. I did do some reading about women and, and bourbon, and I thought it was interesting that it said 17% of bourbon drinkers back in the 90s were female. And that number has risen today. 37% uh, of the bourbon drinkers are women. Wow. So it is growing. That's a um, lot, it's higher than I thought it would yeah. be. Yeah, and there's a lot of women out there that are, um, I don't know what the word is, manufacturing. Distilling and like Distilling. In, in the industry helping like. Yeah, yeah. and I think um, if you're somebody like me that's new to, to scotch or bourbon, um, this would definitely be one to start with, not the one that he gave me last time. That was... But this one, to me, I can see where, you know, ladies might enjoy this or a, a newcomer a beginner mm -hmm. to the scene yeah. would enjoy this. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, it's approachable. It's you know mm -hmm. has that delicate mouthfeel. Um, it's it doesn't like you know sometimes when you smell a whiskey, it kind of makes you go oh. Yeah. And that's what well, I always say. It doesn't back you out of the glass. It's not aggressive. Yeah. And you know another thing that I read that um, Scotch and whiskey, Scotch and bourbon, I guess has that old man cigar kind of connotation when you think about it and um it can be kind of intimidating yeah to females i think but this one again would be a good way to mm -hmm. to break through agreed yeah there's some uh fem it. yeah there's some female distillers that have, have, have come to be uh very popular yeah me and know, the boys are going to the back room to have bourbon while you you know that yeah you know, that old 1950s can, type of yeah, yeah. Else can um, you, know, you don't have to have your fancy glass of wine or whatever. You can you can Absolutely. drink um, a scotch or a bourbon um, mm -hmm. right alongside the guys. That's right. Yeah. Let's give this one a rating. One okay. being really bad, five being really really good. I was pleasantly surprised, and I am like I said, inexperienced. I'm gonna go with a five. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm speaking for all the the ladies out there, 
Um, or the inexperienced. Or, or the experienced, the beginners, yeah. that I would say um, that this is, I would say it's a five for me. Yeah. Taking into consideration what this bottle is, um, it's won a lot of awards. Even at 40% uh, ABV, it's got a lot of flavor, and uh, I'm going to have to go a, a 375 on this one. It's one I would keep in the rotation, I think. It, it's one to keep in the liquor cabinet, in my opinion, uh, especially if you're, like, it, like we were talking about, if you're new to drinking. And the bottle is pretty. We didn't talk about that. I know that's not part of your rating, but you know. Well, I mean, maybe that's something that we could start throwing in there, like the, mark uh, the marketability. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's part of it. Oh, yeah. I have a bottle that I bought just because the bottle's cool. Yeah. I and never had the whiskey. I was like, ooh, look at that bottle. I want that. Yeah, and ladies sometimes, you know, keep bottles and do yeah. other... Yeah, what, little projects or yeah. base or something. I yeah. Don't know. So, I don't know what I you mean, guys do with that stuff. It kind of adds... I chunk maybe it and make the, room for a no, another bottle. Maybe add to the value of it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Mm. So, you're wearing a cask and Q tank, I've noticed. Yes. It's that time of year, it's hot. Uh, here in Arkansas, I think it's 104 today or something like that. So, ladies. Yes, definitely. You need a tank. So, I'll put the uh, link to those in the description box below. Ms. Cask and Q, thanks for joining us today. Thanks I appreciate for it. Me. Absolutely. Hey, if you like what we're doing over here at Cask and Q, then be sure and like, subscribe, and smash that bell. It's going to notify you anytime I upload new content. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.